We already know that modern-day Israel, at least in an earthly sense, had a lot to do with the efforts of the Rothschilds. Some more symbolism that gives that away can be found in the Israeli Supreme Court. The Israeli Supreme Court was funded by the Rothschilds on the condition that they would choose the plot of land, would use their own architect, and that the price of its construction would never be made public. Built in 1992 in Jerusalem, it sits next to the Knesset, which is the main political building in Israel. Also funded by the Rothschilds, the Knesset is the legislative branch of the Israeli government, where laws are enacted and heads of state are elected. Here is the picture of the Supreme Court. This painting is at the entrance to the building and depicts the Rothschilds planning its design along with Shimon Peres and Isaac Rabin. A journey through the Supreme Court esoterically represents a path towards illumination. The ultimate goal of the journey is to reach this pyramid which represents the most holy place in the building. Each side of the pyramid has a circular hole at the top representing the all-seeing eye. Let's do a picture walkthrough along this so-called path of illumination from the beginning and do some symbol spotting along the way. Firstly, the person who enters the Supreme Court finds himself in a dark area in front of a stairway leading to a source of light at the other end. By climbing these stairs, the visitor gradually moves away from the darkness towards illumination. There are exactly three sets of ten steps equaling thirty overall. These represent the first thirty degrees of Freemasonry. Since there are thirty-three degrees to Freemasonry overall, we will discover where the remaining three are later. You'll notice that the right side of the wall is made from ruffled rocks, reminiscent of ancient Jerusalem walls, while the left is smooth and modern. This represents the timeless nature of the occult teachings that have been transmitted from ancient Babylon to today, and is a repeated theme throughout the Supreme Court. Having climbed the steps, the visitor finds that he is on a high point with a great view over the rooftops of Jerusalem. We know that Satan wants to try and claim the high points in a region because he wants to be the most high, so no further explanation is required here. Embedded on the floor is a line which guides the traveller to the entrance of the library, which is placed right underneath the Great Pyramid. This is the path you walk to the holiest place, and of course the library itself represents knowledge. This picture is taken from the second floor of that library. The library is actually divided into three levels, symbolically representing the final three degrees of Freemasonry. The first level is reserved for lawyers only, the second is reserved for judges only, and the books on the third level can only be read by retired judges. This represents the movement through the degrees acquiring higher and higher knowledge. The library functions like all occult hierarchies, where some information is the exclusive privilege of a select few. These are the three levels of the library. Right above the third level, representing the final degree of Freemasonry, there is this view of the pyramid. This is where the Freemasonry ends and the elite Illuminati begins. Directly beneath the apex of the pyramid is this geometric floor pattern, with a crystal embedded in the floor at the centre. There are six squares representing the number of man, and each square of course has four sides, which is the number that represents the world. The crystal in the centre lies directly under the apex of the pyramid. This is similar to the sun symbol embedded at the centre of the Capitol Crypt in Washington DC. The entrances to the courtrooms themselves look like this. They are said to resemble ancient Jewish tombs. Apparently in some Jewish tombs there were holes where the soul was supposed to leave. They have retained these holes in the courtrooms, perhaps to allow spirits to come and go in a similar manner. Again, notice the contrast between the old and the new here. The prison cells, the courtroom and the judges' quarters are placed one on top of the other, symbolising the tiered society as proposed by Plato and the Enlightenment thinkers. The ruling elite at the top represented by the judges' quarters, the auxiliaries like the police and civil servants in the middle to enforce the decrees of those at the top represented by the courtroom and the mass of ignorant prisoners below. This is one of the courtrooms. The judge is illuminated by a natural source of light at the far end, symbolically representing the light of the divine, guiding their wisdom. They retire to their quarters at the top tier to make a decision and then descend back to the courtroom below to bring their illuminating wisdom to the world. Now let's start making our way outside. 
No occult structure would be complete without the obligatory sexual symbols, and the steps outside the courtrooms provide this feature. Again, this needs little explanation. Once outside the building, we are then invited to visit the Dorothy Rothschild Grove. We find this plaque on the wall with the arrow. Alongside it, we also find this plaque, which also contains an all-seeing eye. Sorry about the quality of these, I couldn't find anything more clear-cut. When we follow the arrow, though, to the Dorothy Rothschild Grove, we find this monument, which is obviously an obelisk, an Ashtoreth pole. If we then go to the centre of the parking facilities from here, we find this shape on the ground. Now, some people have suggested that this represents a cross so that people can trample on it as they descend down the steps. I don't personally buy into this theory. To me, it just looks like a sun symbol. All these things, again, are just evidence of the Rothschild's occult influence.